Wow. Well, hello. Hello, everyone. And, and I hope that you interrupt me, um, you know, anywhere along the way for, for questions. I, I probably do better in, in an interview situation than just uh, talking uh, talking to the air. But I'm thrilled to, to be here. And thank you, uh, Eureka, for uh, for inviting me to, to be part of your uh, uh, your PJ party, even though I'm not in uh, in my PJs myself, but um, just a little bit of a sort of biographical background. My name is Gary Boston. I live in Southern California. I grew up in Texas um, and spent most of my adult life in New York City. I um, had a career in finance on Wall Street. Um, very boring and not at all having anything anything to do with yarn. Although I will say my very first job out of college was as, as a, a men's sweater buyer for Saks Fifth Avenue. So, or in the buying office, I wasn't the actual buyer, but um, so there is there is a tie back to my my career. But <laughs> moved out to Southern California um, just about six or seven years ago. My mother in law uh, got an early Alzheimer's um, diagnosis, and we decided we needed to be out here to be close uh, close to her. So I uh, kind of took a early um, into my career and moved out here so that we could be close to, uh, close to our family. Um, so that's kind of the, the biography of it all, but I am a knitter, um, and a crocheter. Um, I've been knitting for about 20 years. I started back in before Ravelry, before YouTube, before when you taught yourself, uh, at a, with a book in a local yarn store, uh, and a little help from grandma. Um, and uh, then picked up crochet right before the pandemic. I'd always wanted to learn um, and, and end up going to my local yarn store here in the, the Los Angeles area to, to, uh, to, to pick up crochet. So um, I've, you know, I would say on the knitting side, um, I was very, very active knitter for the first couple of years. And then my job kind of took, um, took over and I would, you know, always have something on the needles. Someone was having a baby in the office and I did a, you know, a sweater or something. Um, but it wasn't until I got out here and I had a lot more time on my hands where it really um, took off for me. And the reason that probably <laughs> you know, how Eureka knows, knows of me is my combination of knitting and fundraising for a bike ride that I do every year or have done for the last six years. Oh. Um, I ride my bike uh, as part of a big uh, a big ride from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Uh, it's a seven day, 545 mile ride. Um, it's called AIDS Life Cycle, raises money for uh, the San Francisco AIDS Foundation and the Los Angeles LGBT Center. Um, it's been going on for 30 years. Like I said, I've been doing it for the last six years. Um, I had a prior history of doing long distance bike rides when I was much younger. Wow. And a friend of mine got was involved with uh, San Francisco AIDS Foundation. She asked me if I would do the ride when I moved out here. And I said, yes, I'd been 20 years since I'd been on my bike. And I'd forgotten how much I enjoyed it. So the first couple of years, um, after that first year, I should say, I said, I forgot how much I enjoy this. I'm going to do this for 10 more years or until I've raised $200,000 for the, uh, for the charities. Um, and so the first couple of years I did my normal thing, um, sent letters to friends and family and raised, you know, raised money and was on track to sort of do that in 10 years. And then somewhere along the way, I had started pick, I had started knitting a lot more. And I was like, there's gotta be a way to combine these two things that I love and everyone seems to enjoy knit alongs and couldn't I make a knit along into a fundraiser for my bike ride? And so I put out a story on Instagram and said, are there any, you know, any designers that, you know, might be interested in like doing this fundraising idea? It's kind of, you know, different and let me know. A couple of people who, grabbed it and shared it to their much, much bigger names in the, in the business, um, shared it. And overnight, my inbox was flooded with designers who said, oh, I'd be happy to give you, you know, do a pattern and da, 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 da. And so all of a sudden I started talking to them and this, and this woman, lovely woman in Cork, Ireland, uh, called Evan Bale, uh, O'Keefe, a designer had, offered up a design for me. She said, you're thinking too small. 
don't just do one. You need to do a bunch of these. And then she had wilder ideas. She's like, and get all the patterns and put them in a book and da 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 da. da. But I said, okay, let's so let's start with let's do a series of these. So that first year, um, I uh, did four. I did four knit alongs. So we call them the end aids knit alongs. After the second one, we added crochet. So we now do crochet alongs. And that kind of is how my whole online, you know, world started to um started to grow. So from so I've been doing that for the last three years. We now do four a year. Um we are we are just about to kick off one um uh, in the in March. We're in the middle of one right now. Um and it's just become a huge part of my um my fundraising. Um as a result of finding all of these people in this fiber community who are doing great things and raising money and raising awareness for different things. Um, I've really loved to share that information. So I started a YouTube channel where every episode of my YouTube podcast, I have ideas of people who are either selling yarn for charity or, or patterns or are doing hat drives or scarf drives. And I just sort of try to try to get that, um, try to get that information out there as well. So this year is my sixth year doing the ride. It's going to be my last year. I'm going to hit my $200,000 goal this year. I'm very confident. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I mean, it's, I've, I just, I just looked at it uh, before I came on. I just crossed over $25,000. I need to raise 60 this year. So it's not a done deal, but I feel, um, feel, feel very confident. I've got a, in addition to the knit alongs and the crochet alongs, um, last year or the, or maybe it was the year. No, I think it was last year. Um, I started a thing called D stash for good. So I run a fiber auction on Instagram where it's like a big garage sale for yarn where people can list their yarn with me and they can D stash their own D stash. I, and the only catch, I do all the work. 50% of the sales price has to come to me. I also have been able to destash a lot of my own uh, yarn that way. So that's been a really great, uh, great fundraiser for me as well. And maybe um, I'll stop talking for a second, but Eureka and I have something that we're working on that we can sort of, we're going to tease. You guys are going to be among the first people to hear about it um, for, for later this spring, but I'll, maybe I'll just pause if anyone has any sort of like questions thus far in terms of like, what's going on with me and the bike riding and the knitting. <laughs> I know Evan, and that's something she would totally say. <laughs> she think, thinks big. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, it, and it's funny because I, um, you know, I was talking to, to someone else and for better or for worse, one of the things that has sort of like kept this growing and growing is just me not being, smart enough or forward thinking enough to ever say no. I just keep saying yes. When someone has an idea, I was just like, why not? I don't know. I don't, you know, I didn't know anything about starting a knit along when I first started, you know, started doing this and you, you learn as you go and you make changes along the way and you find, find different things. But, uh, you know, every time when someone said do crochet, I was like, okay, sure. Let's do a crochet. Yeah. along." And someone else was like, I'm a sock designer and I would love to do a sock. I was like, yeah, let's do a sock as well. So, so that's, that's, uh, just keep saying yes has been uh it gotten me into trouble a couple of times, but uh it's been it's been good for this uh, for this effort. That's awesome. Okay, so Danielle is asking, how do we learn about the the knit alongs? Sure. Um so I will uh I'll type in um to the chat. My Instagram is if you just look up Gary Knits Gary Rides, you will find me. But um all the information um most everything comes through uh, Instagram uh, every, on my YouTube channel as well, which is also Gary Knits, Gary Rides. Um, you know, I'm always talking about the the knit alongs and crochet alongs. So we typically uh, do one that starts January 1st. So that one, and they always, I try to run them for two months because I want them to be chilled and relaxed. I don't want it to be feel like a race for anybody. Um, there's always... Um, five rounds of prizes during each one, but we reward participation more than completion. So most of the prizes are for whips and there's only one round of prizes for, for FOs. So we run them in January. Um, there's a shorter one in the spring because we kind of usually do that as a choose your own adventure 
spring cleaning, kind of like let's all work on our whips instead of having a specific project to to work on. This year is a little bit different. I can talk about that in a second. I usually start one June 1. Um, the bike ride starts the first week of June. So that one kicks off kind of when I head out to San Francisco to start riding back down. And then I pick it up when I come back. And then we usually take the summer off and start one in, in September. Um, so that's kind of the, the schedule. The way they work is I usually try to find a dyer. Um, sometimes it's a new pattern. Sometimes it's a, an existing pattern. Um, and my two rules about doing these things are we got to have fun and it's got to be something that works for the dyer and the designer's business. So I don't want any money for the fundraising piece of it to come out of their business. I want it to all come from the participants who are participating in the thing. So for sometimes the designers are say, you know, I'll just add on $3 to the price of my pattern and that'll be the fundraising piece. Sometimes they have a set price and I say, why don't we just sell an entry ticket? So you pay me $3 to enter for all the giveaways and that's how it'll work. Likewise, on the on the dyeing side, we usually pair up the dyer with the designer. So we do yarn kits and almost always on the yarn kits, I've told all the dyers, everyone gets that it's a fundraiser. Nobody cares that you're normal yarn is $30 a skein and you're going to charge $33 a skein for the yarn kit because they know the $3 of it's going to come to, 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 to the fundraiser. But at the end of the day, I leave all that decision making up to the, the dyers and the designers because it's their business. This is just gravy on top of, you know, having fun and, and ex getting exposure and, and, and sales and stuff, uh, stuff for them. So that's kind of how they, how they work. Like I said, they most, most of them run for two months, except for the spring, um, and then we do a we do a, um, a Zoom every Tuesday night. There's a uh, one of the, the women who was one of the early participants opens up her Zoom uh, on Tuesday evening, and a, a group of us, you know, everyone just comes and kind of shows off what they're working on and um, um, has a lot of fun with it. So um, that's great. Thank yeah. you. So yeah, yeah. basically your Instagram, if we follow your Instagram, you get, we get all the kinds of information about what you're you doing. Will see, yes, you will see, you'll probably get tired of seeing about my, uh, <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I never get tired. Like, it's so exciting. You're always challenging it's, something. It's been, yeah. You know, it's been, it's been so much fun. Um, it is, it, you know, it is a fair amount of work lining, lining these things up in advance because the, you know, the logistics of, you know, working with a dyer, we got to do a pre-order because I never want anyone to do anything ahead of time and be stuck with any inventory. So, you know, the 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 March um knit along is going to start on March 15th, but just this last Friday we we did the announcement of the pattern and the dyer because you know there's a there's a pre-order window open right now. We got to get that shut down so she has plenty of time to dye up the the yarn and, and get it shipped out for for folks to do it. So there are some logistical things, um, and but it is a lot of fun. And you know, I we always it's always open to use whatever yarn you like. Obviously, from a fundraising perspective, it helps me if you buy the yarn from the yarn from the dyer. But stash dye diving is always welcome. Um, if you've bought the entry ticket into the thing, you can make you know, make it out of whatever yarn you want. And that's one of the fun things for me is because I love seeing these designs come to life in, you know, 10, 12, you know, different yarns that people choose. So it's, it's great to see it in the yarn that the dyer and the designer came up with, but I love seeing it, you know, these things come out when, when, uh, in, in all the different yarns that, that people pick. So um, it's been really fun. Um, I, I'm pretty sure like your background in financial field always helps you to do the planning, logistics, that kind of thing. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's some. Yes, I, I think. Um, yeah, I think from my background, I mean, I think one of the good things, you know, I was a, I was a portfolio manager, so I managed a big uh, portfolio of stocks for a, a international pension fund. So decision making is very fast for me. So I'm very quick to like sort of, yeah, I don't linger on on making decisions very. Um, and I think like planning things out is is pretty, um, you know, pretty good. Now, if you looked. If I turn the camera around, you would not have any clue that I might be an organized person because this room is like completely a disaster uh, with mostly yarn. Um, uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of a D-stash sale right now. So I've been packing uh, packing yarn up all, all day, trying to get it shipped out to people. But uh, 
Um, but I think it's helped. I think it's helped. It's also, you know, the fact that I don't work full time. Like I, you know, when I, when we moved out here and I sort of semi-retired and I do some like consulting stuff on the, on the side, but that has been a blessing in terms of, I would never be able to do any of this if, you know, if I was trying to, 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 um, uh, to work full time. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. It has opened a lot of doors for me in the yarn world. Um, I've met a ton of dyers and designers, you know, one of the really fun things that, um, uh, I, I don't know if you're all familiar with knit stars, the video, um, platform, but they, similar to this, they invited me on to, they have like a, a, a program of like monthly Hello. subscribers. They invited me, Hello. invited me on to, to talk. I um, sent you a message. And from that, one of the questions that the the CEO asked me was like, have you ever thought of designing? And I said, oh, you know, it's interesting you say that because knowing that this is kind of my last year of writing, I've kind of thought ahead of like, maybe I would like to, to try to design something. And she's like, I have a great idea. We want to help, you know, I've lo I love what you're doing with the, the fundraising. And I've been having this idea for a while of like pairing up a beginner with an with an established designer and having some sort of project runway kind of contest where you you're pitted against another team and so from that this spring or now this 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 past winter um i got teamed up with lewis boria who's brooklyn boy knits if you're familiar with him and there was another woman and another designer that got paired up and they did we did this contest this design contest where we had like six weeks and they gave us the yarn. So we all had to use the same yarn and we had to come up with these designs and then they um, published them as patterns, which was then is been a fundraiser for, for, for the bike ride as well. So they, hundred percent of the pattern sales up until this coming week, well, it's Sunday, I guess is when it all wraps up. So we published our patterns. They did a shawl. We did a scarf. I can show you about my, uh, we did a, a scarf. We did two versions of it. This is the infinity scarf version. Um, and then we've been doing like a little make along of our, of, of our scarf, our scarf pattern, which has been, um, you know, a fundraiser for the, the bike ride as well. So none of this, you know, would have ever happened if I hadn't, you know, sort of taken Evan's advice and, and thought bigger about, uh, uh, bigger about things. So it's been really, really fun. Okay, we have one more question from Christina. And she is asking, what sweater are you wearing? And she loves the random shapes on the oh, yoga. Thank you. Um, this is uh, the first sweater, my first sweater, my only the only sweater I've ever made for myself. I this was my Rhinebeck sweater this year. It's um painted honeycombs uh by Stephen West. Um and he does it where he he does like a different contrasting color in each of the rows of the little honeycombs, but I just used a single uh, color of variegated yarn. So really, really fun. Really, it's all slip stitches. So it's really um, much easier than it uh, and it looks. Yeah, Painted Honeycombs by Stephen West. That's right. Um, in uh, Shibui Knits, uh, now discontinued uh shibui knits uh haven uh, not haven that um i can't remember it's a cashmere merino blend and then this is a, a dyer who's no longer dying uh called fully spun um was um uh, brooke adams at uh fully spun she she did uh she did yarn for one of my crochet crochet alongs and um she went out of business and um, that was one of her colorways so um i guess we can talk a little bit about what uh Eureka and i have cooked up so I was I was thinking this, you know, as I was headed into this year on the fundraising side. So I have the make alongs, I have the D stashes. Both of those things together, you know, got me to like $51,000 last year is what I, I I raised and to get to my $200,000 number I need to raise close to 60 this year as I said. And so I was like, okay, I need to figure out some one more one more thing, one more thing that I can do to sort of like, you know, um get that extra mile. So I was inspired by, um, I don't know if you all know Jake Kenyon of Kenyarn. Um, his, uh, he was a dyer. He know, he's no longer dying, but he, now he does like resin buttons and things like that. But a couple of years ago, he did um, 
a collection that was a collaborative collection with a bunch of different dyers. It was over the summer. It was called Camp Ken Yarn. And each of the dyers got, you know, one was called like snakes in your sleeping bag. And the other one was like, you know, skinny dipping in the lake or whatever. And they all took a color inspiration and they dyed their own colors. And, but it was this collection that, uh, you know, that he put together, but a bunch of different dyers. And so the ride down from, San Francisco to Los Angeles is really, really beautiful. You, I mean, it's a wonderful way to see the the state of, of California. So you go from, you know, the coast, like outside of San Francisco, and then you come into the farm country, you go through wine country, and it's really, really beautiful, natural beauty. And then there's also all the fun stuff that happens on the ride. So um, not probably surprising anyone being called AIDS life cycle. There's, you know, like, a drag queen disco pit stop. And, you know, there's, you know, all sort, you know, lots of colorful, everyone dresses up in costumes on, on Thursday um, of the ride is called red dress day. And the original idea of it was there's these switchbacks that go up a hill as you're climbing out of a valley into uh, an air force base and early in the ride. So this is like nine in the nineties, someone said, Oh, we should, everyone should, dress in red and it'll look like the AIDS ribbon kind of climbing, climbing up the hill. We'll get a, a great photo of it. Well, given the, you know, the group, uh, it took about two seconds from dress in red day to become red dress day. And so now everybody, man, woman, child, everybody wears a red dress on that day. And the costumes are elaborate and, um, you know, the groups get together and you know, do like themes and everything. So there's a lot of fun stuff and a lot of natural beauty. And I was like, it would be really cool to do a collection of yarn based on some of the color inspirations from the ride. And so just like when I first started this, I just put in my Instagram stories one day, I just said, thinking, you know, thinking about doing this, you know, a collection, would any, any dyers interested? And 30 or 40 people um, it, you know, as soon as, as soon as I got like 30 or 40 responses, I pulled it down because like, this is, I was like, it's good. It's gotten too big. And we ended up with a group of about 20, 21 dyers. Um, I sent out a big document with a bunch of photos that I've taken along the ride with sort of ideas for colors. Um, and then they all chose what color they wanted to work on. And so coming in March, um, and I've just just started to see some of the, I've gotten some of the sample yarns in, but coming in March, we're going to launch this collection of yarn that's all going to be inspired by colors from the ride down the the, the California coast. It's going to be called Stitch Out Loud, and which is a play on the, the AIDS life cycle theme this year is called Ride Out Loud. So it's called Stitch Out Loud, and there's going to be about 20 dyers involved. It's really going to be fun because it it's just been amazing to see what everyone has take done with the the color. So people have come back and they're like, I want to do, you know, a mini set. I want to do a gradient. I want to do self striping. And so we have all varieties of, of yarn and they're really grouping into two groups. So there's like sort of the earthy earth tone, sort of natural colors. So there's like, you know, a wine country one and one called Pacific surf. And then there's like the bright ones that are, you know, disco party and red dress day and all this stuff. So it's kind of grouping into to, to two group groups, but really, really, really fun. So Eureka is one of my dyers. And um, so she has come up with a, a color. I don't know if you want, you, I don't know if you want to tell them what yours is, but um, I won't spoil the Is price. it okay if I show them the inspo book? Yeah, or is yeah, it too yeah, much sure, give sure, away? Sure. sure, no, no. It's okay? Yeah, totally. Okay, so this is the document Gary gave us. It's it's like a instru almost instruction book. <laughs> Comes with yeah, this it goes, instruction. Yeah, it, goes day, it goes day by day and kind of walks through like what the ride is like from the rider's perspective. So they like a whole bunch of uh, pictures to come uh, for inspiration, and we had to choose one of them. This is beautiful. Mm. Which just goes on and on. <laughs> What's this tent city is? So, so the tent. So, the the um. There's about twenty five hundred riders, and mm -hmm. so every night there's a gigantic camp, and it's like this tent city. And so they um, we 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 camp in parks 
um, along the way, and they they carry the uh, they carry the, the the tents for you. And so they, they've set up they set up this grid, and everyone just you know has their tents there. But they're all these blue and white tents, uh, and then someone someone has taken this colorway. So it's um, we also they also have our rider trucks, the yellow trucks that carry all the the gear. And so someone has done a a colorway that's uh, called Tent City. And it's blue and white, uh, blue and white uh, variegated, and they're doing a, a yellow mini as a like a sock set. So it's like the truck and the and the tents. I see. Yeah. Have it ever have it ever rained? <laughs> oh yes. Um, yes. It, it's I mean it's California, so it, it doesn't rain a lot. But last year was particularly cold, and and mm. one day it rained um, all day long, and it was only about like. 40, 50, 45, 50 degrees. So it was freezing cold. So we, we really, a lot of people had to get picked up by the, the buses because they couldn't finish because it was so cold and wet. But um, that was the, that was the only day on the six years I've been doing it, that it really, really rained. It usually rains the first morning out of San Francisco. Like it usually rains mm. from like, we, cause we start that day about 6 AM and usually rains from like six until like lunchtime. And then we're kind of out of the rain. I see. We always worry about rain here yeah. in Vancouver. And I'm just trying to find the one I picked. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Parting. And I don't know. Did you? Oh, there you there go. There we go. This is my picture. I know you probably think what. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you. I'm so glad you picked that one though because it's you know it may not be the most uh, beautiful photo in the in the, in the group, but trust me, when you're riding your bike for eight hours a day, you see a lot of asphalt and yellow stripes. Yes, like I totally get it. This is what you see the most during yeah. the ride, right? Yeah. yeah. I love this because um, I'm planning to do like a one um, skein plus yellow mini skein, like gray speckle full skein mm. and mini skein in yellow. So you can actually do the stripe yourself. Sure, and you, sure. You, cho cool. you choose the stripe you want. Anyway, so I stopped this because I found mine. And then, <laughs> all right. I know they are gorgeous picks. Yeah. Okay. It's really, I mean, it's it's a it you know California is a beautiful state, but it's it's a really nice way to see you know to see the state from a, a different a much slower you know perspective, um and you know you just get to see all sorts of uh, of different different aspects of the of the of the street of the state. So. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah, I think that. I mean, I think that's. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, uh, anything else going on, but no, the, the, the yarn collection is going to be the big thing. Um, the big thing for me, this, uh, this spring to help get me over the edge. I've got a couple more, uh, D we just finished up one D stash sale, uh, right now. There'll be a couple more of those auctions in the, in the spring. That's a, that's a separate, I'll pop it in here, but that's a separate, um, I mentioned it on my, uh, on my Instagram, but there's a separate Instagram account for that. It's called D stash for good. Um, and those are a lot of fun as well. And they're, they're big, uh, they're big fundraisers, uh, for me as well. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait to, I can't wait to see, um, see your yarn in person. I'm going to be, uh, starting to photograph everything. I'm going to do some swatches just so we have some samples of how things knit up. Cause I always like to see that when, when I, especially on a variegated or a speckle, just kind of see how it, how it works up, um, you know, in actual knitting. And then I'm going to get those. Po oh, first, I got to figure out how to set up a website. But <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'll get a get a Shopify website site up and running, and then we'll do a. Pre what we're the plan is to do a pre order starting around the 20th of March. Uh, keep that open for a couple of weeks, and then shut it down, and then get those um, orders to all the dyers, and then have it ready to ship out before I before I head out on my bike. Mm. So after the, the, this is your last one, right? It is. Do yes. you have any plan after that? You kind of mentioned designing, but. Yeah. So I think, you know, I, um, uh, this, I mean, this, this was, this, this, this happened a little faster than I was expecting. And 
I, I mean, I learned so much. Lewis was fantastic in, in, in helping me, but all, you know, just learned a lot about the process and, you know, kind of how to think about the de designing. So I, it's interesting because we, we designed this, um, and as I, as I mentioned, they gave us the yarn because, um, Shelly at, at Knit Stars had like 3,000 skeins of this uh, alpaca silk yarn that she wanted to to, to try to get rid of, um, and which is what the, the kits were made out of. But we weren't sure how they were going to sell it, whether it was going to be in kits or individual skeins. And my version of the scarf, which was the infinity scarf, took three skeins. His version, which is the a regular traditional long scarf, took four. And I thought was, well, if someone's buying the, the kit and they don't know which one they're going to make, if they end up making mine, they're going to end up with an extra skein of yarn. So I already went ahead. What I did was like quickly threw together a hat that incorporates um, this smocking stitch. Um, so I guess technically I have my second design already uh, done, and um, but I am probably going to to continue. I, I'm taking a hat design class um this spring and so i think once i can stop riding my bike and stop raising money um so furiously i'm going to take a little break over the over the summer but i think in the fall i'll start to 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 work on something i'd really like to to figure out shawls and how to design uh design some shawls but i do imagine the first thing that i do will be um will be a hat i love i love knitting hats um and, but beyond that, I think, you know, what I'm going to, you know, I obviously won't be raising money for the bike ride as a rider. Um, they do have a program for people who aren't riders called at home heroes. And I think every year I will continue to maybe do one knit along and maybe one D stash auction to raise a little money for AIDS life cycle as a non-rider. But I think what I'll do is, you know, you know, I mentioned, I, I kind of started my YouTube channel because I was finding all of these things in the yarn world that were doing good. And I'd like to shine a light on that. And so I think what I, uh, not as much, I'm not going to do four make alongs a year and I'm not, not going to do four or five D stash auctions a year, but I think I will try to keep raising money. I really enjoy doing that and um, pick a couple of charities here and there each year and maybe figure out a way to make that a prize in one of the make alongs. Like if you win the grand prize, you get to choose the next charity that we raise money for the, the next time around. So that we kind of, it's not just the things that I'm interested in, the people who are participating can have a, have a voice in it. So um, I haven't, you know, quite fleshed it all out yet, but I think that, you know, what you'll see is that I'm going to continue to raise money um, for, for different charities and, you know, just um, take it a little slower and not, not feel like I'm racing literally racing to, <laughs> towards a, towards a finish line and, and then enjoy a little knitting just for knitting sake and not for, <laughs> not for fundraising sake at this point. So. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have more question? Um, Patty is asking, do you go all the way down PCH? I'm not sure what PCH. No, uh, the Pacific Coast Highway. So that's highway oh, okay. one that, that, that runs, runs, um, through uh, like Big Sur and and down there. No, we don't. We follow Highway One out of San Francisco, um, not on Highway One, but kind of follow that path um, for the first day until Santa Cruz, and then that the very beautiful scenic part of Highway One down through Big Sur is too small for 2000 bikers. We would basically shut down the road for, you know, a day or two and they couldn't do that. So we end up coming inland. And so a lot of those photos you saw of like the farmland and things like that, that's where we come inland for a couple of days and then end up in the wine country. And then towards the end of the ride, we come back to the, to the coast and, and ride the last few days right along the coast down into Ventura and then on into uh, Los Angeles. So um, it's kind of a meandering route, but over the 30 years, they've really figured out the best, Routes also places cities that have parks and things like that that are big enough for, you know, 2,000, 3,000 tents um, where they can, um, you know, get us all slept and, you know, sleeping and fit, fed and showered and all that stuff. Awesome. Okay. Now, is, every, everyone, is everyone in Canada? Is everyone on the, on the call generally? Uh, no, I don't think no? everybody is. No. Okay. 
they usually like mostly Canadians, but maybe it, it's um, it's interesting. Our New Zealand subscribers, the majority is American people. Okay. I see Maryland. I see Patty from Maryland. So Oregon. Okay. So, oh, Oregon. Southern California. Where are you in Southern California? There we California? go. <laughs> I'm south of LA. I'm east of LA. Oh. So I'm in uh, Redlands, which is oh. Oh. halfway halfway between um, LA and Palm yes, Springs. Where the um, hands on, hands -on center, center is. is. Yes. yes. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes. Yes. But ironically, I'm originally from Canada. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> will, the, yeah. will the ride be affected by the with the rain? You know, I don't I don't think so. I mean, I hopefully I, I mean, Highway one, maybe because it that always tends to wash out. Um, but I'm hopeful that we've got enough to continue. The ride doesn't happen until June. So unless it just continues to rain, um, there may be some odd reroutes and things like that that they have to take into Woodland uh, into effect. But uh, hopefully not Woodland, California. Well, Woodland or Woodland Hills. I know Woodland Hills. I don't know where Woodland is. Um, oh, that's great. Well, that's a Woodland, not Hills. Not with <laughs> Um Excellent. Yes. So, like, it, um, it's like we started in Canada. We started this show because in 2020 October, we have uh, this big local show called Knit City. Yeah. Um, they had the Zoom, uh, Zoom show, but it was just classes. They didn't have um, vendor market hall. Okay. Uh, I think it was just too much to organize back then. I totally understand. And but like we buyers ne needed a place to connect with our customers. Ah. So that's how we started. And it's very small, casual show, but we we doing shows. Uh, we did three times first year, and then two times after that. So this is our ninth show. Oh wow, that's fantastic! Yeah, next one is the tenth. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I think I think you know one of the, maybe the only good thing that came out of the pandemic is just the prol proliferation of like people being comfortable with with Zoom and it's been able yes. been able yeah. to connect with people all over the place in a way that I don't think ever you know existed uh, before. I know my our the Zoom call that we do it's a ton of people from Maryland. So my sister's in Maryland, and for whatever reason, like. I would say half of the group that zooms with us on on Tuesday nights is is from from Maryland, but uh, you know, people that I would have never gotten to meet uh, otherwise. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's amazing. Zoom kept us kept us connected. Somehow. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Okay, thank you. The, the, sure. anyone, anybody has more questions for Gary? Yeah, and if if not, um. Now you know where to find me on Instagram. If there's any questions about any any of this, uh, I'm always happy to answer DMs or or whatever. So just uh, shoot me a question, and hopefully I'll can see some of you uh, join one of the the knit alongs coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was You're just welcome. so nice to have you for our show today. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you. Gary. And I can't wait to I can't wait to see, see your yarn. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. All right, so it's almost eight o'clock, and if you don't have anything else, I just probably finish for today because we're going to start tomorrow morning, right? <laughs> okay, great. Have a good evening, everybody, and I see you ten after ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.